hello, I'm sitting here with Jovi and we're enjoying a campsite as we look out into a lake. We're eating some fruit, right? What do you have, Jovi? I have strawberries and cantaloupe. That is awesome. And, um, and we're enjoying some time. We got to go down to the museum, the Creation Museum, and we got to see um, some petting uh, animals we got to pet and got to feed what? Horses? and goats it was really good but we got to see and we got to enjoy God's goodness and that's part of what we like to do we like to enjoy God's creation and we'd like to do that together and uh, we had a great opportunity to do that um, today together um, we're, what I'm gonna talk about in this um, this video is I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, how I can lead my family to become healthy church members so um, we'll get started in just a minute as I um, as I finish eating this yummy fruit with Jovi and enjoy a moment. But I thought it, this would be a good time. Oh, fruit salad with Jovi. She had to correct me on that. And and then I'll be back with you in just a minute. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, so. What I want to do, go ahead and talk about is I've got some uh, points that I want to go over, but really I want to base them on two passages in particular. One is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I want you to look at uh, verses 7 and beyond. Um, and in this particular passage, you'll see it, what it says here, and it tells the fathers to, um, to teach their children, and to teach their children as they walk by the way, and as they uh, rise up and as they're lying down yeah and um, and so we we have this um, this admonition for parents to go ahead and teach their children now I'm a grandpa right and it's still my responsibility to teach them even when they want to act up a little bit um, but the other passage I really want you to look at is Ephesians okay. chapter 6 Ephesians 6 4 says guess what it says it says fathers do not provoke your children to anger, but raise them up. That's right. <laughs> raise them up in the discipline and instruction of the word. Um, and and you know, it tells us in these two particular passages that we are to teach them intentionally. We're to be intentional as we teach, aren't we? We're supposed to intentionally teach children about the uh, the Bible and what what it's supposed to be about. And so we teach them all about God, right? And so uh, Jovi, at her request, she wanted us to um, talk about the ducks that we have in a pond. So as you look out there, you'll see there's a beautiful pond that's in front of us. And this pond has some uh, awesome wildlife. And uh, one of the wildlife they have are, that we got to enjoy yesterday were the ducks. And Jovi, what sound do the ducks make? Quack, quack. That's right. They make quack, quack. And, uh, and what do the ducks, uh, what did the ducks do when we tried to feed them? They came up to us, didn't they? Who made the ducks? God. God made the ducks, that's right. And that's what we try to teach along the way. As we're enjoying life, we try to teach them a little bit about what God has done. So, teaching intentionally is the idea that we're supposed to teach with, with a purpose. That, that every moment is a teaching moment. So even as Jovi is sitting here with me and helping me to teach a little bit, she's learning something, right? And so she learns a little bit about teaching and, and also about who God is and how good God is because God gave us things like ducks and ponds and uh, llamas and horses and uh, what else did we uh, have fun with? Yeah, all kinds of good stuff, right? And uh, blackberries, right? The little blackberries that we have. So isn't that good that God gave us that? Go ahead, you can eat that if you'd like. So the first thing is to teach intentionally about, uh, about God and His creation. The second thing that we see is to teach objectively. And now, what does it mean to teach objectively? Well, it, it's that we have a basis of truth. We have the natural order of things. We have general revelation, and that's the, what we see through nature. But we also have a special revelation. Special revelation is the revelation that God gives us through His Word. What? So we teach. So we teach through His Word, and we we tell people about Jesus because His Word tells us about Jesus, 
And so we objectively tell truth. We teach truth. We believe in truth. And because of truth, we're able to, uh, to, to uh, uh, hold on to it and use it as principles for how we live. So we live on a daily basis and the decisions we make are not based on our feelings. They're based on His Word. And we teach our children to do that as well. Third, it's to teach consistently. We're to teach uh, with, with the, the uh, consistent basis that, that as we're not only teaching the Word, we're living the Word. In other words, our children, our grandchildren, our family, our co-workers, our friends, they all see how we live on a daily basis. And if we are to be consistent teachers, we are to be a consistent witness. A credible witness gives a credible teaching, a credible gospel. So. As a uh, healthy church member, you lead your family, they are watching you. And your, your family's watching you, your friends are watching you, your co-workers are watching you. So not only are you to teach and to say what, you're, what they're supposed to do, but you are to do it. Nobody hates anything more than a hypocrite, especially someone who claims to be righteous and ends up doing the wrong thing. So make sure that you're teaching consistently as you, uh, as you go ahead and, and set about uh, leading your family to be healthy church members. Teach passionately. Now what I mean by that is make sure that, that Jesus is the center of your life, that the Bible is the center of your, your every being. Your kids should be able to see you more with the Bible in your hand and, and studying the Word maybe, um, whether it's uh, through, the, uh, through a computer screen or, or through, uh, through a tablet or through your book, your Bible. But they should be able to see you with that more than they see you with the remote control in your hand, right? Also have a passion for the Word. Make sure you have a passion for, for doing what's right. Um, one thing that I, I can tell you, and, and my kids will probably uh, be the first to tell you, is no matter what, they know that I'm never going to stop telling them about Jesus in some way and teaching them about Christ. I'm never going to just stop doing something. I'm never going to just... Uh, 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 you know, let them live the way they're going to live. If something doesn't match up right, I'm going to tell them. It doesn't matter how old they are. I know as you get older, your parenting style changes. But you know what? You still have to be that advisor, that counselor, the one who teaches them, who trains them. Because guess what? 19-year-olds don't know it all like they think they, they do, right? And it's funny how as you get older, your parents get a little wiser. If they're godly, especially, that's the case. My, I remember when I was a child, um, my parents were, were so smart. As I became a teenager, my parents were complete idiots. As I got older, I knew they were complete idiots. And then as I got into my 20s and started having kids of my own, it's amazing how much my parents, all of a sudden, how smart they got and how much they knew. Well, it's the same thing for you. As your children, um, they may respond or not respond to your teaching. If you are consistent and you are passionate and you are intentional about your teaching and about the witness of, of the Word on, in your life, it begins to change them as well as your relationship with them. Last but not least, it's to teach humbly. If we're intentional and we're consistent and we're objective, right, and, and we're passionate, we got to make sure that we are humble as we approach our, our relationship with our children. It is a huge responsibility that you are to have in teaching your children to, to be healthy church members. In other words, as you are driving from church, ask yourself, are you complaining about something in front of your kids or your grandkids? Are you uh, talking about someone else and gossiping? Are you... Um, uh, creating some sort of discord or, or disunity or are you positive cooperative are you able to um, to encourage are you talking with your spouse in a way that encourages and strengthens their faith and edifies them or are you uh, joining in the uh, the the, the uh, negative Nelly kind of uh, campaign that goes on you know God doesn't want you to be negative he wants you to be positive he doesn't want you to be disunited he wants us to be united he doesn't want us to be separated. He wants us to be one. And so, that's a humbling time for you. You must be humble as you take on this responsibility and be humbled in how you conduct yourself. This responsibility is huge. And for me and for you, for our families, it's something that we've got to not take lightly but take with great soberness. 
you see throughout Scripture the uh, the continued uh, call for for people in in the church to be uh, church members that are that are uh, cooperative and and one. And and I look at the Book of Acts. If you remember the Book of Acts, the times when the Book of Acts um, shows the early church to be the most united is when they were in. And the old joke is one accord, right? Not the car, but in in unity, they were they were in one accord. They were together constantly. They were doing ministry. Uh, Acts chapter 2, you had 3,000 people get baptized and then it said, and they had set themselves under the apostles' teaching, fellowship, uh, worship, and prayer. And then it said, and day by day they continued ministering and, and, and where there was no one who, who did not have need and so uh, no one who had need at that point. And so everyone had need and they were continuing to, uh, to be able to uh, minister to one another and also to the world and the church continued to grow and we're added to numbers that's what we are to be if we are to do anything for the Lord we are to do it as a united church and let me just say this I've said this um, uh, last week and, and I said it in our small group the week before God is more glorified when we are unified be sure that you are contributing to the unity of that church and I pray that as we have gone through this great study together that you continue to encourage and find ways that you can contribute to the needs in our church and grow as a church that we everyone may come grow serve and share thank you for putting up with these videos for the past few weeks and thank you for your time in the small groups I pray that this has been impactful and that you as a, a church member will be a healthy church member and that you as a church member will continue to spread that health to other people that we can glorify God with all that we have. God bless you. Thank you. Enjoy your small group time.